Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another quick Flutter tutorial. In this one, let me show you how to display a nice simple bar graph in your apps. Now I'm going to link this FL chart package below. This is a very common popular chart in Flutter to create a lot of different type of graphs. So not just bar graphs, but you can see there's line charts, pie charts, scatter charts and all that. So make sure to take a closer look at this package, but I can show you real quick how to code up a bar graph by jumping into the code. This tutorial is sponsored by Rotato. Now I get a lot of questions about how I show off my apps in a cool way in my intros and it's through the help of a software called Rotato. They have pretty much every device you can think of to use as a mock-up and my favorite part is the ability to control the motion to make it swivel and rotate in any way you can imagine. So make sure to use the code Mitch at the checkout to get a little discount. And thanks Rotato for sponsoring this video. Now I've opened up a brand new Flutter project and just to keep everyone on the same page, in my main function, I'm running my app, which brings us to this homepage. And this is just a blank scaffold. So you should just have a white blank app like this. Now, just before we start coding, just to kind of go over the goal of today, what we're gonna try to do is for the input, we want to take in a list of numbers. So just to add some more color to the situation, let's imagine we have a list of weekly expenses. So like from Sunday, the Monday amount, all the way through to Saturday. And we're going to take this input and display it in a nice bar graph. Okay, so first of all, let's create a weekly expense. So it doesn't have to be an expense, that's just the example I'm going for. But let's have a list of doubles. And so I'm just gonna put some numbers in here. And now let's go to the library and create a new folder called bar graph. And we're going to create a few files here. Now the first one we're going to call individual bar. And so let's create this class. Now we just need two things for an individual bar. We just need to know the X and the Y. So the X, I'm just going to leave it as an integer because this is just for the position on the X axis. Whereas for the Y, we'll leave it as a double because we might be more precise in the value on the Y axis. So let's make sure to create the constructors for these. Cool. And now let's create one more file called bar data. And so what we're gonna do is when we first create the bar data, we have to know the seven bits of information. So the Sunday amount, Monday amount, all the way through to Saturday. And let's create the constructors for these. And then we have to put all of these amounts together using the individual bar that we just created. Okay, so let's make sure to initialize this information. So in the bar data, we're going to have a lot of individual bars. And so starting from Sunday, let's go through and fill it out for the rest of the week. Okay, cool, so it's set up pretty nicely now. So we can now come to your popspec.yaml and let's bring in that package. So it's FL chart, and I'm just gonna go for this version number. So save it. Like I mentioned before, there's a bunch of different charts here that you can go for. Okay, in this particular tutorial, I'm just gonna show you the bar chart. Okay, so let's create a final file here called bar graph. And let's call this my bar graph as a stateless widget. So now that we've got the package, you should be able to start typing bar chart and let's press tab to import it. And so for the bar chart data, we have to specify the max and the min. Okay, so let's say like a hundred and zero. And let's see, coming back to the home page in the scaffold, let's create this graph so we can see the changes. Cool, so you can see like it's a entire page full of graph. So I'm gonna wrap it in a sized box and let's just change the size here. So the height, let's say 200 and looks like it's at the top. So I'm just gonna center this. Cool, so this is our little graph and you can see the max and the min, what that is talking about. So if I say like the max is 200, it'll readjust everything. Okay, now if you actually wanna increase the physical size of the graph, then you can come back to the size of the box here. Okay, so hopefully we're on the same page. Now, when we create this bar graph, remember we need to give it the input of the weekly summary. All 
right? So when we build this graph, let's make sure to initialize the bar data. So what that means is let's just create our bar data object and make sure to pass through all of the information. So this weekly summary list, the zeroth index would be Sunday, the first index would be Monday and so on. Cool, so now our bar graph has got a red squiggle because we have to specify the weekly summary. Sweet, so now that we've got the data in there, let's just initialize it. So coming back to our bar chart, the data is going to be given to these bar groups. If you go to our bar data, let's map this information onto a bar chart group data. Okay, and so for the X, I'm just gonna give it the X value for our individual bars. Okay, so if I just give it the Y in the bar rods, you can see now that our graph is populated. Cool, so it looks like that's all good. Now on the bottom X axis, looks like it's all zero and I forgot to change this number. So the X, let's just make sure to increment it. And this is essentially how we would populate it, right? So what you would need to do is to make sure to give it the right numbers, right? So coming back to the homepage, this weekly summary list, just whatever numbers in here is gonna be displayed. Okay, sweet. So now that we've got the sort of functionality down, I'm just gonna spend the rest of this tutorial to decorate this up and make it a little bit more presentable. So what I'm gonna do is, if you look at the bar chart rod data, you can specify the colors. So if I say red, you can see it's gonna be red. Now I'm gonna go for a bit of a minimal look. Okay, I'm just gonna go for like sort of black and white. Now these bars are looking real thin, so let's just make the width 25. And it's looking really round. I wanna change the border radius, maybe go for four. Cool, that's looking really good. Okay, now just an extra little touch that I like to do in bar graphs is if you look at this backdraw rod data, I want to have some white color in the background. So let me show you what I mean. So to Y, let's go for 100, which is the max. And you can see it's that remaining part that we can change. So for that, I'm gonna change the color to be a very light color. Reminds me, I should come back to the home page and maybe change the scaffold color to be 300 for the, for the gray. So this way you can kind of see that there's a bit of a gap, right, to fill up in the bar graph. Now this graph has a grid on the back, which I don't like. So go to this grid data and I'm just gonna check this off. There we go. Same thing for the border. I don't want no borders. Much cleaner. Good, which brings us to these titles. So you can see if I say true, it's got titles on all four sides. So depending on what you want to display, you can put whatever information you want. For this particular graph, I'm going to get rid of the top I'm gonna get rid of the left and the right, and we'll just only have bottom titles like this. And so let me just show you how to do one of these. So for the bottom titles, I'm just going to separate this widget out and create it at the bottom. You can use this bit of code to style up and input the other titles as well if you like for the left, top, and right. But let me just show you how to do it for the bottom. So firstly, I'm just gonna create a style, just a text style. And I'm gonna use a switch case statement. So depending on the value, right, so if it's zero, then let's go for Monday. Oh, sorry, Sunday. And if it's one, let's go for Monday, two, Tuesday, three, Wednesday, etc. So you can see on the x-axis, currently it's just got the number zero to six, and now we want to change it to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. Cool, so on the bottom tiles, if I fill out this axis titles again, you can see on the bottom, it's just got that, it's just got the weeks, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I think this looks pretty sick. Cool, and that's how you code up a bar graph. So like I said, this FL chart package is a really popular Flutter package. I feel like I should say this bar graph I incorporated into my expense tracker app, 
which I also made a tutorial for. So check that out if you need to see how this is actually going to be linked up to the rest of the code base. So check that out if you want. Good job for making it this far into the tutorial. If you made it this far, drop me a purple heart in the comment just so I know. But thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.